What's up, guys? Welcome to the Chester Taylor League Podcast. Welcome. This is going to be a, a brand new event that happens hopefully weekly. I know Sam has started uh, kind of a new league, so to speak, with uh, new people jumping in and everything. So I'll introduce myself. My name is Lane. I'm uh, drinking a glass of Yugodal Ardbeg Scotch on the rocks, for those of you interested. And uh, here we have Sam the Commish. Was that French, by the way? That was kind of a French-Scottish mix. Right. You know? I've got a Kirkland brand, that's American, 24, and I'm washing it down with the Pacifico. Well, that's a good chaser there. Yeah. Good old Cabo days, huh? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that. Well, you know, anyways. So we just want to <clears throat> get a few points brought in for this podcast. We uh, have some new people jumping in, like I said, and we have a couple rules. We have a couple missions that we want to accomplish by this podcast, so... That's why we're doing it. Uh, the first is to promote engagement. We got new members. Who are the new members, Sam? Uh, Zach, Jeremy, and Jordo. Okay, we lost Squirrel because he's an idiot and has no idea about his calendar and booked himself with his like anniversary or something. No, they're going to Colorado, and then he just told me the other day they're actually he double booked himself because he had CO that week. Oh, okay. So th there were two reasons why he wouldn't have made the draft. Le who they heard. So anyways, we don't need them anyways, but we, we really just want everyone to be involved. So uh, first off, if this podcast is not meeting your needs, uh, just let us know and we'll adjust to whatever way we can help you out more. Um, so another mission is to make fun of people. You're going to very likely be offended. So if you don't want to be offended, don't listen. Um, if you are extremely offended, you can come talk to me about it. But We're looking at you, Volk. Uh, yeah, Volk, well, primarily, yep. Yeah. <clears throat> of course, Mark will probably be the punching bag, but what's changed? Um, but yeah, we, we want people to be made fun of. Feel free to make fun of us, and if you think of a good segment to have on this podcast, a good idea to talk about, let us know. All right, so that's the second thing. The third thing is detailed analysis from yours truly. You guys know I'm the accountant. I like numbers. Not me. Sam's more of a go-by-his-heart kind of a, a guy, so... We'll see what happens. My you treacherous, know. wicked heart. And that's, yeah, we're going to be debating a lot about this, about you know, numbers versus your gut. Um, obviously, sometimes the numbers are identical. That's when you trust your gut, but we'll kind of talk about that a little bit more. So hopefully we can offer you a little fantasy help or detriment. I know if you read Matthew Berry, a lot of the fantasy analysts, they say to never bet on our advice and to, you know, we're going to be wrong. Definitely sometimes. So... Uh, if that happens, sorry. But I'm actually banking on talking up a player, being wrong about them, and then having someone draft them so I can't get them. Some, being disappointed in a pick and having it turn out better. So <clears throat> we, we might try to do some you know, double mind trick. You know? I don't even know if I have to. I don't think I'm that good. I don't think I'm, I have to do that. <clears throat> Sam, shut up. Of course, the belt. You're doing that right now. We're wearing the belt. Sam so. is the rating champ. He's wearing the belt at my place right now. He has it on. Actually, it's actually a Teddy Bridgewater jersey. Well, that's the same Thank thing. Thank you guys for that's the That's technically the belt. Donation. So, uh, any, uh, and then obviously we're going to share our opinions. We're going to tell you if we were right or wrong, if you're dumb or if you're a genius. We're going to judge. And so, sorry for any misjudgments. And again, if we offend you, don't be offended. Yep. Don't be offended. So, Sam, do you have any requirements for this league? Anything change at all? What's what's going on? You know, last year we kind of had a rough year um, for obvious reasons, but I want to get back to, you know, everyone being involved, everyone uh, talking about the league. When we, we get together as guys, you know, have a good time discussing it, discuss trades, uh, everyone be open and honest about, you know, communication in the league and just enjoy it. Have fun. Um, you know, this is one of my favorite pastimes, one of my favorite hobbies, and that's why I keep coming back for commissioner. It can be kind of stressful at times, but, uh, you know, I enjoy it. It's one of the few opportunities that we have to all get together and hang out and have fun with a common interest. So let's make it fun this year. And make it hurt a little bit for the people that are really bad. Well, fun and pain go together sometimes. Jeremy, we might be talking at you right now, so yep. just so you know. Speaking of which, uh, we need to talk about keepers this year. Keepers. Well, it was... Uh... 
it's actually more even than what I thought it was last year. Uh, I thought there would be a, <clears throat> a big difference in the level of talent in each team, but <clears throat> it's coming across pretty, pretty even for the most part. There are some definitely lead horses. There's a couple slow stags, but uh, yeah, some uh, some got dealt a bad hand, and you know their team reflects that. And I think uh, some chose poorly. Let's put it put it that way. Let's start there. Yeah. So, well, we got two new members, so mm -hmm. we're actually a 12-team league now. And so, with the keepers established, you know there are some really good. Um, Keepers that are still available. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually surprised. We'll make fun of you people that chose the wrong ones. But what are some of the best players you still got here, Sam? I think first and foremost, you got to go with Ezekiel Elliott. He's going to be an absolute stud in that offense. They have the best offensive line. Darren McFadden looked good last year. And this guy's way more talented than him. I think uh, if I had a chance at him in a rookie draft, I might even trade some of my keepers for him. So... Uh, that's how highly I regard him, especially in a keeper league. Um, he's going to be the number one guy, I think, off the board, no matter who's picking up. Have we decided who is uh, getting the first overall pick? Nope. They decided Friday. That's kind of the fun of it. Okay. Well, Zach and Jeremy, that's your option. Uh, Elliot will be the number one player taken overall. Kind of a guarantee, but uh, you know, some of the other players that are, are available are Doug Martin. <coughs> Mark. <coughs> uh, Amari Cooper. Uh, Keenan Allen, Jonathan Stewart, Carlos Hyde, Calvin Benjamin, Edelman, Lewis, Forte. You could definitely have a solid keeper team if you're just starting. Um, you know, you're not going to win this league by your keepers, um, or even in the first three rounds of this draft. Yeah, I think this is there's so much talent out there this year, and there's so many keepers that are spread out. Injuries always happen that, uh, you know, I think it's actually pretty competitive for those two guys. Maybe yeah. even more so than the players ranked 10 through 7 in our power rankings. One thing that uh, you know a 12-team league benefits is that it, it kind of evens out the talent field. Uh, you don't get as much contrast as you do in the 10-team leagues uh, because you can add that depth. And people typically have those weak points on these 12-team leagues, so that can help even out the playing field. Even if you have a really good team, you typically have one weak spot. Could go the other way, too. I mean, it could create you know six heavy favorites and six that... Suck, for lack of a better term. So I guess we'll see. We shall see. But yeah, you know, Zach and Jeremy, I'm actually pretty positive about you guys. Those are some pretty good players that I think are going to be consistent. Well, I, I'm I'm really hoping. I think Zach is our first dad in the Chester Taylor League. Uh, shout out for Jax! <laughs> um, My boy Jax! So I'm excited to have him. And Jeremy, I think... I, I, I see some smack-talking potential with Jeremy. I think, yeah, those two need to get it together. He's not bit. afraid to mix it up, I don't think. No, well, you know, feel free. Also, by the way, if you want to join this podcast in the future before we get too into it, we can connect you via phone. <laughs> to and this so new technology if, if that you, we have. There, there is a thing called a telephone. We'll put you on speaker, and you can have your say. So guys like Jairus, um, or people that don't want to come to my house because they don't like me, mm -hmm. um, you know, feel free to do that and you know, defend yourself. So we'll, we'll probably, we'll, that'll probably be a segment going forward is like, People defending their decisions. So yeah, I uh, feel like we should have Mark on next week to defend the just to keep her decision. But oh, we'll, let's, sure. let's get into it. We're, let's we're get done into it. talking. Let's talk about. So we're going to do a power ranking segment like we do usually. We, we verbally write it out, and uh, excuse me, not verbally. We you know write it out and show it to you. Sam has done it. I do it in my old league, and uh, we're going to go through it. So I actually I made the power rankings this time, and it's just based off of your keepers. So at number ten. Uh, you know, before we knew exactly what happened, it's it's you, Mark. Number 10, you're last. And I think we all know why. Chris Ivory is such a questionable decision because I'm looking at ESPN ranking. He's the 36th ranked running back, 95th overall. You could have gotten him in the 10th round. He's literally the omega of running backs. Oh, yeah. Him. I mean, you've got the alpha of quarterbacks in Cam Newton and the omega of running backs. And so maybe Ivory. he's just fulfilling prophecy. Oh, He's he, fulfilling his name. And what's funny is Chris Ivory is not even the top-ranked running back on his own team. TJ Yeldon's ranked ahead of him. Uh, I, I don't understand it. Do you do you see the upside of this pick? Is there any way that Chris Ivory outperforms Doug Martin without injury? No. Okay. No. Dumb pick. Uh, someone's going to benefit from picking up Doug Martin because while I don't think he's going to have an elite year like he did last year, he is better than Chris Ivory. Yeah, I mean, if someone picks Elliott and let's say the second person doesn't pick Martin, they have two running backs that are taken in the first two rounds. They basically 
we'll get the steal of the draft right there. So thank mm -hmm. you, Mark, for making the newcomers a better team. But I other, appreciate it. But other than that, positives, uh, Allen Robinson's going to be on his team forever. And I've admitted I'm probably undervaluing Allen Robinson because that guy's a stud. I just don't think there's going to be much volume going around, but he's still a top 10 receiver. He's mini Megatron. I've been saying that for, you know, since both season four of last year. That was my guy. Week four. Did I say season four? Yeah. Week four yeah. of last year. That was that was my dude. All right. Who's next? Well, next I got, sorry, Danny boy, you're number nine with Rodgers, Foster, and Bryant. I think you see the weak point on this team, Sam. Yeah. Um, I think Des Bryant's still going to be, you know, a lead as long as Tony Romo is. Uh, I think Rodgers is obviously going to be Aaron Rodgers for five more years. Uh, Arian Foster will be elite for those two games and then get hurt and his knee will explode and he'll try to come back next year and be overdrafted again. Yeah, I respect the high risk, Danny, but you know the floor on Foster is just way too low. Um, who who was his other option for a keeper? Do you remember? Uh, Matt Forte. Which... Forte. It's not a PPR league, you know. People are expecting Powell, so I, I understand where you're at, but both those guys are are aging. Um, now, I don't even know if Foster's going to start in Miami. You know who he had that I'm, I would have been tempted to go with? And tell me if you think I'm wrong. I would have been tempted to go with Marvin Jones here. That would be that would be actually the high-risk pick. Because you're going to get production out of him. He has a pretty high floor. Yeah. He's going to catch 60 passes for sure this year in that offense. Jim yeah. Bob Cuda. Cuda. We love the Cuda. <laughs> Jim Bob Cuda. That's his literal name. I know that's his name. I, just don't, I still don't believe it. I'll, show me a birth certificate. Uh, that's for Donald Trump to decide, which Obama, but anyways, th sorry, Danny, number nine, uh, you know, we, I would love to have Aaron Rodgers on my team, and again, th this is also mostly people that have quarterbacks on their team are going to be down on this list, because they're, the, the depth of quarterback this year is ridiculous. They, no quarterback should be taken before... before yeah, round. and Aaron Rodgers, you know, you could get him in the fifth round, so basically he'd be going along... You know, guys like Ryan Matthews, the 21st-ranked running back. You know, guys like uh, Devontae Parker, Larry Fitzgerald, the 30th-ranked wide receiver. So you got to take that into account. Yeah. But Aaron Rodgers is very val valuable, and by the end of the year, you typically view Aaron Rodgers as an elite talent over all the other guys who are at the position. Yeah, I mean, especially with this league with six-point touchdowns for QBs, I mean, I, I get it. But uh, you know, And, and just... he has an advantage over everyone else because he can sign his picks in. We can't do that. That is true. He can communicate in a way that we cannot. I guess. He does have a love of your mind on his side. Yes, exactly. I it's, mean, she's got a sword. Yep. And she's pretty good looking. So maybe pull Bumpy up to seven. <laughs> <laughs> we'll think about it. We'll think about it. All right, who's next? All right, the next is going to be This is a Breeze, which this is actually was a tough decision between um, him and the next one. But he's got Ingram, Jordan Reed, and Drew Brees. So, uh, we'll, you know... His team got hurt by Martavis Bryant going out. Uh, Martavis should be in there instead of Breeze, and I, I think I told you last year Martavis Bryant would have been a top ten receiver for me this year. That guy, I think is, he's got the talent to be a top ten wide receiver, but not in that offense with with Antonio Brown. You know, taking fifty five percent of their targets, they can coexist, man. I'm telling you, I'm sure they'd be great together, but I just don't think he has the capability of being a top ten in that offense. Maybe. We'll never know now. Levon, Levon Bell catches forty percent of their passes, and and uh, and Brown takes the other forty percent. So you got, you know, I'm sure he would cut into both of their their workload a little bit. But I mean, I know he's elite talent, but he never really proved himself. He was a preseason flame out, basically, is what's what's come to be. He can be. He smokes a little too much weed, but Florida living. Don't we all? <laughs> not me. Florida living <laughs> is treating Jarris well, though. Um, his team is high upside. Um, Breeze, you know, I doubt his upside, actually. I think, uh, like... He's the most consistent quarterback on, on, in the league, basically. That helps. Um, yeah. I, I'm i not crazy on Breeze this year. Everyone seems to be freaking out. Um, I, I, I don't think anyone's freaking out. I just think compared to when you look at you know, your top four, four quarterbacks, Breeze is always in the discussion. Yeah. Right? Okay. I, I think Reed probably has the most upside of any tight end not named Gronk. Um, I think correct. Ingram probably has one of the higher floors, if healthy, of almost any running back, especially going after the first round. And his injuries don't seem to be connected. They seem to be kind of like, I don't, we don't believe in luck, but bad luck at different yeah. times. You know? It's bad timing. He was cool. healthy in college. 
and he had two contact injuries where he got blown up with his shoulder and with his his, uh, his knee. So you're so, in on Ingram this year, it sounds like. Um, he's in my top eight. Really? Yeah. I, he might even be in my top six. He's very touchdown dependent, but he seems to always get the touchdowns. So. Well, he also catches passes, too. That helps. That helps increase your floor, which yeah. is what we'll talk about later with another guy. Well, we'll yeah, we have, we have a, a, a healthy debate coming up soon. Oh, yeah. All right, number seven. And this is going to be Raccoon Killing Samson um, with Adrian Peterson, AD, uh, the, the child beater, T.Y. Hilton, worst dreadlocks in the league, and Brandon Cooks for your mama. Is Peterson your number one running back? Uh, in this format, yes. Yeah, it's tough to go against it just because if you're one of the people who believes in for your first pick should be a high floor, they're not going to bust. I mean, how can you see a scenario outside of injury where Peterson busts and doesn't finish as a top 10 running back? Nope. There's no way. Any other guy you can say that, um, I think, but for him. And that that's valuable. Uh, with that in mind... I do think Jarek McKinnon gets involved more. Um, I'm passing downs, which Peterson didn't catch passes anyway, so. No, I think they're going to I think they're gonna start the transition into Teddy and start first and second downs out of the shotgun with McKinnon, which I would like as a Vikings fan, but if you're owning Peterson, that's not what you like to see. Uh, Hilton and Cooks, one of those guys will have a top 10 season. The other one might have a below 30 season, even if both are healthy. Hilton is completely reliant on luck. And Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck. Yeah. Um, and if Hilton, even if luck is, you know, haphazard through the year and gets injured, kind of beat up a little bit, he's got an awful offensive line, Hilton is still one of the most inconsistent wide receivers in fantasy. He's got some really great games, but he really has a lot of goose eggs, too. So I agree. I like Cooks. Um, he's definitely in my top 12 wide receivers. He's in that. That you know, just outside of elite, but in that offense in New Orleans, he he really fits in well. There's a lot of targets to go around there. Thomas Snead, I think Fleener gets involved a lot. He's Breeze is always involved the tight end. Uh, I wonder how Cooks fits in and if he's going to assume that old Marcus Colston role or if that'll be spread even more. He'll be more of an underneath guy on third down. Uh, Colston and Cooks actually will both be the third down guys, I think, in that offense. Okay. So. Hmm. Think of that what it is. I'm um, seeing great things out of the preseason already from Cooks. He only played like 15 snaps. Yeah. He went to Thomas and Cooks, and he'll be a first down guy. You know, I get a guy at the low floor. If it was a PPR guy, Samson, um, your team would be a little higher. So yeah. there you go, Samson. Wish you best. But uh, you know, hopefully, Peterson is beating more children, and Hilton cuts the dreads, and Breeze doesn't die from old age. There we go. All right, number six, I Hate Trading, Volk, with uh, Jamal Charles coming off an ACL, uh, Gronk, who's had multiple knee injuries, and LaShawn McCoy. How this you, is knee injury central. How do you think uh, Volk feels about his ranking at number six? I think he gets it. I mean, Jamal Charles has been like, what has he been in the league, five years? No, more than that. He's like 29, I think. He's probably been in the league seven years. Active, though. Like, been a full-time running back. Yeah, probably about five then. So out of the five years he's played, the dude's really only had like two and a half actual years of playing. I'd have to look up the stats. It seems like a bold claim, but he's played like you know eighty some games, and he's been injured like forty of them, so like forty three percent. So he'll be healthy. He'll be great. He doesn't have actually that many carries in his career, and he's got a high yard per carry. But the dude gets jacked up. I think if there's one guy that you can get in the second round who's going to finish as the number one running back, it's probably him. I don't think Ingram has a chance to finish as the number one running back. Um, Lacey, Rawls, um, I suppose Bell. But but this is a twig team, man. Yeah. Gronk's a twig from the half, you know, from his junk down. Yeah. And McCoy is a twig. And Charles is a twig. You know, one of those guys is going to get injured. Like, you can almost, like, the yeah. odds, it's, it's a high... Would you have kept Cooper over McCoy? I would have, just because of the upside of Cooper does have elite talent. Yeah. Um, I just don't think this is the year for Cooper. I'd rather own Cooper this year and have drafted him as my fourth player. But let's say McCoy only has one year left. Play for this year, man. I know we have that, but I, I have McCoy and Cooper rated right next to each other. So hmm. I go upside. Okay. 
And let's I would not... probably have gone McCoy. I agree with Bulk on this one. And so, and McCoy also plays for the Bills, correct? Yeah. I mean, they, they'll run the ball, but he's got competition in that backfield, too. It's not like he's going to be the lone back. Well, one guy's suspended. For um, only a couple games. Well, he also came in overweight, allegedly. Well, he's a beast. I don't think there's much competition there. I think as long as McCoy's healthy, he will be the lead dog, and he'll be good. Well, uh, you definitely have high potential, but it just it's, the odds are against you right now, Volk. So, uh, you know, I would love to trade for Gronk. We can talk later. <laughs> All right, so Did next... Did I tell you the deal I almost got for Gronk last year? No, let's hear it. So, I had just... I was looking for something for the playoffs. I, I needed to win that last week and make it to the playoffs and then go for the home stretch. I think I ended up trading Rawls, A.J. Green, and Brady for Devonta Freeman, who I don't think I even started the la- in my championship. No, you sat him. I think I sat him. But right after I made that deal happen, uh, Volk offered me... D'Angelo Williams and Tom Brady for Gronk because he was going to make a playoff run. So if I had made that deal, he probably would have won the championship and I would have had Gronk. But I don't even know if I would have kept Gronk. Tough call. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, it, it depends how this, uh, if how you're, when you picked your keepers. Yeah. Because if Gurley had this four game suspension, you probably would have won Gronk. Le'Veon Bell had the four game suspension. Yeah. Bell. Yep. yep. Maybe. Anyways, we'll, we'll talk about my we'll team. We'll talk later. about it later. Yep. And then we have Jordo, who comes in for Squirrel and um, the Rule of Threes, which please change that name. He might have already. The, sa- the name is awful. We'll have to check. Yeah, i got to check that out. But that's like the dumbest name ever. Sorry, whoever owned that team a long time ago. And Squirrel never changed it. So we got Sammy Watkins. Actually, no, it's Thomas Rawls. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. Uh, AJ Green and Brandon Marshall. Watkins is still available, by the way. So. so, I owned AJ Green, and I'll tell you what, there's no more frustrating player to own in the entire NFL. I hated it. I would not trade anyone for AJ Green. I wouldn't draft him. That's not, that's that's preposterous. I mean, come on. And no. As far as your team, yes, but let's say, you know, let's say you're, uh, you're Danny, and you have uh, Foster and Forte. Would you trade Foster and Forte for AJ Green? No. I, I hate AJ Green. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I despise that man. Do you I, hate green people? Uh, Do you have a thing against green people? Who's green? The Green Giant. I hate him. Ryan Molesky? Hate him. From K-Fan? Hate him. No, that's right. No, I, uh, I, AJ Green, here's the deal about AJ Green. He he teases you. Even he's He ends up with 1,200 yards and 10 touchdowns every year. But the way he gets to it is the worst way to own a player. He would get six points from me every week and lose me so many weeks. That's why my team would score fine, but I'd lose all these weeks because A.J. Green was scoring six points for my number one receiver. I don't think he should be a first-round pick. I think he's a perfect number two receiver. I, yeah, I agree with you there. And I so in, in a lot of drafts, he's going number four, which is absolutely ridiculous to me if you play a weekly game like this. And he's got the same problem that uh, Cordero and uh, Diggs have, press coverage. Yeah, he's awful. His division, he's a deep guy. He's lucky he's got in that division because he has the Steelers and the Ravens. People don't give him the credit as being only a deep guy like they do some of these guys. He is, he's, he's a he's a glorified Deshaun Jackson. Like he just he gets these huge plays. He's and, got a little better hands and a little more body control than Deshaun Jackson. But he's just bigger. Like that's just because he's bigger. He's a little faster. If Deshaun Jackson were six inches taller, he'd be AJ Green. Maybe. But the problem is you don't get that week-to-week consistency just like you get from Deshaun Jackson. You're, I, I would take A.J. Green, if you're talking about how he's going to end the year, is probably the fourth-best receiver in the league. If you're talking about who I want to own, he's probably the 10th. I agree with that. He yeah. should be your number two receiver, and you need to, if and you want to rely on another receiver to carry you. Yep. No, I agree. Um, anyways, I, I then, went then on you have, Then you have Marshall. And, Marshall uh, is a better receiver than A.J. Green. I agree. For Definitely more consistent. Yeah, and then uh, Thomas it, Rawls. How do you feel about Thomas Rawls? We haven't talked about him. There's a lot of uh, media action coming out of Seattle. I heard Christine Michael. Though. Christine Michael. Like, I was actually worried about Procise. Nah. CJ. Um, I wasn't worried about CJ, or about uh, this Christine. Awful name for a male, by the way, Michael. It's nice to see that Jordan's sister is 
Still involved with his life? Still involved with the Seattle office. You offense. move out of your house, Jordan, you get your own house, and, and you know, there's still a Christian there for you. Yeah. So that's good. He's worried about Christian he... with his Thomas Rawls keeper. You know, here's my opinion. I think Rawls is going to be fine. I think he's going to... He is not going to catch passes. He's going to be like a 1,200-yard rusher and 10 touchdown guy in that offense. Yeah, I, I would with Sammy Watkins over Rawls. That was uh, that was his other option. Watkins just seems to be uh, injured last year, and when he got healthy, he killed it. I know he's still injured now, but all signs are that he's you know green light. So mm-hmm. I'll be talking to Zach or Jeremy. Whoever gets Watkins, will be I'll be sending you a, a text message, uh, and we'll be talking about that. So. But did a nice job, Jordan. You really kind of lucked out inheriting that team. Um, you know, Brandon Marshall's aging, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. That offense, Fitzpatrick really leans heavily on him. Loki, I would take. Uh, I would put Volk ahead of Jordan. Yeah, I could see that. I I, mean, uh, I just I just I'm automatically scratching one of Volk's players out. Okay, he's, he's playing with two keepers instead of three. Yeah. Okay. That's how I see it, you know. Like, Volk, I love your keepers, but one of them's going to be done. So you're still beating out seven through ten, but I'm giving you only two keepers this year okay. by week five. So, moving on. All right, number four, you have Samson's twin. And if you haven't checked it out, Samson, you should really look at my my team page. I think you might enjoy it very much. But What's that guy's name? I don't even remember, but he's pretty funny. <laughs> Anyways, anyways, right. he's uh. Oh, it's um, gonna bother me now. How uh, you, got, you got Antonio Brown, Lamar Miller, and Eddie Lacy. You can definitely see the risk there with Lacy. I don't see risk. Um, I I think Eddie Lacy is he's. I, I think I looked at how I rank them, and he ends up being my number six back. Woo! For ESPN, he's number eleven. Give me your six. That's ridiculous. Um, I think he finishes the year behind Gurley. David Johnson, on a per-game basis, Le'Veon Bell. I'd still rather have him by the way I draft. Okay. Lamar Miller and Jamal Charles. Then it's Eddie Lacy. So you're leaving out. Adrian Peterson is the big snub there. Okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree that he could have that possibility, but... um. Just, just as a question, and this is your player. I'm, I'm like trying to convince you that your player is really that good. But tell me why Eddie Lacy won't be a top ten back this year. Give me um, a reason why he, he wouldn't be. He is a boomer bust. I mean, he will kill weak competition, which they have a lot of this year in their yeah. schedule. But <clears throat> when it comes down to it, I mean, Rodgers doesn't trust him. He Rodgers has a full control at offense. He's not checking down to Eddie Lacy runs the ball. He has in the past, though. I, I think. Not last year. Not last year. But we've seen this before. We've been down this path before with uh, Doug Martin and, you know, I think C.J. Anderson's another guy who's going to do this again. Jeremy Hill's another guy that's going to do this again. People have bad years at running back, especially if they come in overweight. One thing that always motivates people is a contract year. Eddie Lacy's playing in a contract year in the best offense in football. He's lost weight, which allegedly was his problem last year. So he's fixed the problem that he had last year. He's going to get the carries. There's no competition in the backfield. And we've seen him do it before. He's mentally not there, though. And thank you for making me look wise. But I mean, it, was, it was between him or uh, Keenan Allen for me. And, you know, I love Allen. But I really like that Travis Benjamin guy, that San Diego guy. Well, if you ever want to trade Lacey, I will be first in line. Yeah, he's definitely on the on the block. Well, so we'll yeah, talk. If you guys are interested in Andy Lacey... Um, you know, it's it's a mixed bag for me, but I had to go upside there. And, I mean, you can't be the number one player overall, and almost a guaranteed top ten running back, Lamar Miller, barring injury. I have high hopes for Lamar Miller. I think he's some I, some professional analysts have him as number two. With considering Le'Veon Bell's suspension, he is probably number three for me. So I mean, and that's and it's mostly because of a lack of known quantities. I mean, the guy finishes, like, what, the number six or seven back last year on limited touches? Uh, I don't know. I think... He only had 190 carries last year. Yeah, I think he's... If he can stay healthy, he's 
poise to outdo that. He had 110 carries less than Adrian Peterson. Yeah. Still he, the 6th or 7th ranked running back. He might annoy you a little bit, but I think he's he's going to be all right. Okay. I think you're going to be good with him, and Brown is Antonio Brown. I mean, the guy's <clears throat> been Jerry Rice for the last few years. And you guys can all appreciate my wisdom there. Yeah. Well, what did I do with three years ago? I don't remember. That was a great... I jumped into this league with Antonio Brown as my first pick. And How many championships have you won since then? Uh, I lost one and <laughs> and uh, was a top scoring team last year and didn't make the playoffs. So yeah, you can Gilbert Arenas. You can <laughs> suck my okay. Sorry for the inappropriate language. All right, number three. Give me Demary is still the best named team in this league uh, with DeAndre Hopkins, Alshon Jeffrey, and uh, Demarius. Your team is better than that team. I know you're probably trying to be humble, but uh, Hopkins is probably more of like a ninth ranked receiver kind of guy. Alshon Jeffrey on a per game per game basis is better than DeAndre Hopkins in my opinion from here on out. Yep. But I don't trust him at all. I don't think he can hold up. I think he's proven that over the years. And then uh, Thomas, what's his first name? Demarius. Demarius. And the namesake. Yeah, the name. The yeah. namesake. He uh, he scares me to death. I wouldn't touch him with a 10-foot pole in any of my leagues. Um, but he's a good... I mean, he's a good value in the third round. Uh, I actually do... I mean, Mark Sanchez has never been below a ranked 20 quarterback when he's been active. Ugh. Yeah, he sucked in New York, and everyone hated the butt fumble, but the dude's going to get balls thrown his way. Okay. I mean, he, I disagree. I think, and he's got elite talent. I mean, it, Elshon Jeffrey is a top five wide receiver if healthy. If I'm, I'm, if you have my opinion on that, and Hopkins will be consistent. He would be my number four, five, or six ranked team. I think. I think you're. De- Are you pushing me and Volk then to three and four? Yeah. Okay. I'd probably say that. I mean. I can see that. I just Hopkins is a first round. Jeffrey, I would actually take in the first round if he's there, and Thomas is a third round too. I think you have a first, a first, and a second. Uh, Lacey's a third rounder for sure. In most, in most mock drafts, Lacey. I guess that's where I would take him. I guess this is my opinion. I would take Lacey in the second round. Yeah, all right, Kyle. I was nice, and I let you be one place ahead. I, I love Kyle, and he always outdoes exactly what I think he's going to do. He, I, I rank him low every year, and he outdoes it. Uh, this year is going to be the same thing. I, I don't particularly care for his keepers, especially with... Well, you um, can't... You know, you don't have any other options, though. I looked at his team, and no. it was pretty obvious what his keepers were going to be. No, he made the right I team. don't think we had any doubt that was what it's going to be, so... All right, Moving so, on. So now the, the toughest two to decide on, based off of value, and a lot of it is trending... Um, towards wide receivers this year. Running backs are very devalued. <clears throat> um, but I have Grant. I got you at number two, my friend. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to suck up the Sam or anything, but I'll tell you why. Julio, thank you are. Please change that name. It's way too cheesy. Between Julio Jones, OBJ, and Jordy. When the, the three best players in fantasy right now are Antonio Brown, Julio Jones, and Ola Beckham, when you own two, I mean, that's... Those two, he didn't have much beyond that last year. And those two basically led him to the championship game. If he can draft one other guy, like how I got Todd Gurley last year or David Johnson last year, he, he wins the championship. I mean, those two were so productive. It's unbelievable. Um, I think it's a tough call. It's more personal taste. Um, you know I'm a running back guy. I, I think this year running back is, is the best position to own. Uh, but if you're going to start your team with two wide receivers, that's pretty good. And Jordy is a pretty good third one, too. I mean, those are three top two-round guys. Okay. Jordy's going at the top of the second round most drafts. So uh, I think I think Grant has a good opportunity to repeat, and he's going to be a leader in this league forever because of those two guys. If you want a hot sports take, it's my hot sports take uh, okay. soundbite. Uh, teams will actually figure out how to defend OBJ this year. 
no. Yep. No, you're so it's wrong. It's going to happen. If if there's anyone on that team that's not going to be figured out how to be defended, it's Odell Beckham. They've had two years to figure it out. The guy has had the best start in the history of wide receivers. My bold prediction is he'll be outside the top ten this year. <sighs> Ooh. Not saying I wouldn't pick him there, but that's my bold prediction. And, if I'm... Uh, Go ahead. Here's a hot take right back at you. If I can start my team with any player in our league, Odell Beckham's the guy. Okay. More than uh, Antonio Brown, more than Julio Jones. I disagree with that. I disagree with that. Jones has got the size, man. He can beat press coverage. He can play on any offense and chuck the ball up to him. He'll catch it. Um, even, even more effective than Megatron. Julio Jones is all physical talent. Um, you saw how Calvin Johnson diminished in his late 20s. I mean, and Calvin Johnson was a better athlete than Julio Jones is. We're talking about now, though. We're talking, let's say you, you watch your keeper last day three years. I mean, Odell Beckham over the next three years will outscore. Julio now, Jones. what if I said that Eli Manning was going to break down and affect OBJ's? I don't particularly consider. Eli Manning, a great like fantasy quarterback. Like I don't think that Odell Be- Odell Beckham is quarterback proof. He might be the only wide receiver in this league that's quarterback proof. I think Julio Jones is more. I think Julio Jones is the most quarterback proof wide receiver, that, more than Antonio Brown, believe it or not. Man, I, it's Odell Beckham's second year, and he's third. Now it's his third year. Third. Sorry, last year was Jones his and OBJ are the, were drafted the same draft. No. Yep. No, they were not. Look it up. Jones and Green were drafted in the same draft. Odell Beckham Jr. was drafted with, like, uh, Sammy Watkins and Mike Evans. 2014 NFL draft. Is that when uh, OBJ was drafted? Yeah. Let's look it up. So as we're talking, I mean, the main thing with Jordy's, I don't think Jordy's ready. He had the, the alternate surgery or you know, injury that was related to his injury before. How old is he, like, 31? Because... That's it's the only just, thing that concerns me. It's that, I mean, he bloomed. He was a late bloomer. And a lot of his talent is based off of the fact that he can catch contested balls and Aaron Rodgers puts him where he needs him. What did you find out? Uh, so we got Watkins in 2014. That's taken by the Bills. Then we have Beckham Jr. Yeah, you're right. So when was Julio Jones drafted? Was it the year before? 2011, I think. Oh, he's not going to take that long. Just look up Julio Jones <clears throat> drafted. We have some awesome gummy worms and M&M's provided oh, by Whitney, by the way. They're great. Sponsored by Whitney. She'll tell you what you need to know. 2012. Okay. So he's two years older. Yeah. Was he hurt for a year? He, he had a foot thing. Is that the deal? I don't know. But I, I view him as more injury prone. I view him as less skilled, <clears throat> more reliant on physical talent. OBJ's lightning quick, but he's also a technician. Um, he beats people the same way that. He's spraying those pests. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, any technician, emergency medical technician, he can go toe to toe with any Comcast one. technician. He can go toe to toe with any of them. Um, Grant knows I, I would trade almost anything I have, I would trade my firstborn child, unborn. For a shot at Odell Beckham. You hear that, Kate? <clears throat> yep, she hears it. All right, well, Grant, I, you know, you could have been number one here, but I can't argue with three number one picks. Um, with Gurley, Bell, and Johnson. That is Todd Gurley, LeVon Bell, and David Johnson. So I think LeVon Bell may get the four games back. Honestly, he's still a first-rounder, in my opinion. And for Sam, when you're, you know... You're talking about weeks five through seventeen. He's going to be still be a top five running back. So. The number one thing I learned last year is you don't discount people due to suspension. Anyway, I think Josh Gordon, who's got out of the year, a <laughs> year. But you know, if you drafted a team full of guys who were hurt or suspended and that had dropped in value because of that. You would have won your championship last year. Todd Gurley, I swooped up in the fifth round of every draft I was in because no one wanted him because he was hurt for like three games. Last year, you picked him first round in this, the draft, in this league. Well, that's the fourth round in a real draft. But I 
and it was my fifth play. It would have been my guy. Well, that was that would have been my pick. Okay. So, anyways, so that but that's my point. It's you know, I mean, the only reason I got him was not because his talent was up at that point in the draft, but because he was hurt. And Le'Veon Bell is coming back from a knee injury. He'll need the four games to recover, anyways. I think this is a blessing, and I'm thankful for it. Well, you can think whoever you want to later. <laughs> um, and then David Johnson, who is, you know, I'm a big P- uh, PPF guy, pro football focus, or PFF, PFF whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it. Um, I'm a big PFF guy. Um, I don't think it's perfect, but they have David Johnson as their number one running back this year. And Sam, you're not the biggest PFF guy. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I don't think he's going to be as good as, he's not going to be the number one back. Um, I don't think he even has, like, the number one potential, in my opinion. You watch him play, and he got a few, like, fluky touchdowns, but his floor is so high because he catches passes. Um, he, I think he's very safe for as safe as you can be with, like, a breakout six game. I, I don't have any doubts that he's going to, he's not going to see Jay Anderson or Jeremy Hill bust. I don't believe that. Um, but I also don't believe he's the number one running back or should be taken number one. Do you, do you think he'll finish top eight? Running back, yeah. Yeah, I think that's where he'll finish around. Okay. Um, I, I think he's such a value at, you know, where most guys are going because it's just so – running back so <clears throat> scary up at the top that I think when you can get a guy who catches passes, is elite talent and an elite offense, you take him and you hope for the best. So do you think David Johnson or Ezekiel Elliott will have a more productive year? Boy, if you, you had know, to pick between David Johnson or Ezekiel Elliott, Ezekiel Elliott you know. scares me. He, uh, there is something about him that scares me because if you're the Cowboys and you draft him number four overall, are you thinking the next five years or are you all in for right now? And that's the choice that they have to make. Um, They're all in for right now. Romo's got is aging. If that's uh, the case, then then Ezekiel Elliott because he's going to get just as many carries and behind the best offensive line in football. Um, I, I still have doubts about that, about whether they're all in for now, because he's going to be their franchise after Romo goes. Um, but, you know, it'll, it, it'd be a close. Change your name. To what? Something not... You don't have Jason Witten on your team. Oh, I'm the commissioner. My picture's commissioner. Is it, is it called... you got to change that name, too. That's no, a bad name, too. You don't, have to, you don't tell me how to look you're like You're like the big Lebowski. You can't just call yourself the dude. I come. Whatever. Well, Sam, right. when you're wearing the championship belt, you can do whatever you want. <clears throat> well, we're running out of time, Sam, so we'll talk about that later. Okay. But uh, the next segment and final segment is Would You Rather, a game we've played, uh, us guys, a couple different times back in the day. <laughs> so we've had some good time. But now we're talking about deeds, not chicks. So, Kate, close your ears. This is a dude talk time. Mm-hmm. Kate's listening, by the way, as we record this, so... All right, so the first duo that we have, you got to pick between Mike Evans or Alshon Jeffrey. So uh, Sam is an Evans guy. He actually kept him last year. Mm -hmm. And I'm a Jeffrey guy. So we'll kind of debate this through here. And, and, uh, you know, obviously in this draft, they're already already kept. I mean, Evans is available um, in this league. But, you know, this is kind of for your other drafts, just kind of general fantasy advice. So... Why, why do you like Evans, Sam? Um, I think you're going to get 16 games out of him. I think uh, Jeffrey poses a risk with all these this hammy, this knee, this ankle. It's just constant. It's just one thing after another. He doesn't play through injury. Um, on a per-game basis, he was great last year. Um, when he was opposite Brandon Marshall, he was great a few years ago. But you're relying on Jake Hutler without Adam Gaze to throw to Alshon Jeffrey. I think you're in for a disappointment. Gase, uh is assistant, his protege, so to speak, is still their offensive coordinator. Gaze is, like, he's my age. He's he's so young. He doesn't have a protege yet. I, I, I think that you're... Gaze gonna... is like 35 years old. Jay Cutler had a career year last year. You just year. added 10 years to your life. That's a, that's, a, that's a total lie. You can't say that. You're 25 years old. <laughs> Jay Cutler... Gase has... has been teaching football since he's been 19. Probably got injured in high school playing quarterback and then became a coach. Well, he probably did. Jay Cutler had a career year last year... Um, and here's and here's pro Mike Evans. That's anti Alshon Jeffrey. I think Alshon Jeffrey ranks a little bit lower than everyone else does. Pro Mike Evans, the guy played with a rookie quarterback last year and scored three touchdowns. 
That's not going to happen again. He scored 15 the year before. That's not going to happen either. Uh, it's probably going to be somewhere in the middle. 10 touchdowns is reasonable to expect him, and 13 to 1,400 yards. That would equate to approximately Alshon Jeffrey's best season ever when he's been fully healthy. I don't think Alshon's going to do that. I would take Mike Evans. I think he's a sure thing uh, with how many target shares he's going to get and how big his catch radius is. My goodness. I like the sure thing. Uh, I'll make it quick. I mean, when I was thinking about this, Jeffrey and Evans are being taken about the same spot in the draft, and Jeffrey's you know, jumped up a little bit as he's been a little bit healthier. But look at this. When he was healthy, even last year, and by healthy, I mean he was still limped. He had a soft tissue injury. So it affected him the entire year. He averaged 14.6 points per game last year when he was healthy in your league. So uh, as far as the top five wide receivers, <clears throat> 15.8 Antonio Brown, 15 points Julio Jones, 14 Odell Beckham Jr. And that includes the game that he was suspended for his fight with Josh Norman. Uh, I don't have the four. So uh, Jeffrey was the third per game average of 14.6. And if he's healthy, he's top five. It's, it's he, you know, I, I like uh, Kevin White. He's not going to steal targets like when Marshall was there and Jeffrey was the up-and-comer. Um, it just, it's, he, he could be number one. He really could. No. Yeah. There's no way. Jeffrey hasn't been healthy with the ball coming to him, you know, 15 times a game. Why is that a positive thing? <laughs> what do you mean? Why is him not being healthy, like, oh, well, you know, I mean, it's... It, I'm just saying if he is healthy this year and he gets... it's You can get the you can get similar production from Mike Evans in Jameis Winston's second year without as much injury risk. So why wouldn't you take it? Maybe. I mean, injury's a tiebreaker for me. And so these guys are similar talents. I would take Mike Evans. Uh, it depends on your judge of talent. I That's, suppose. Uh, circumstantial. I mean, I... I think Jeffrey is a... His hands are ridiculous. Evans got great hands, too. He's not as fast as Jeffrey. Not as great of a route runner. Evans is just kind of run down the sideline and jump and grab the ball kind of guy. See, that's why I view Jeffrey. I think I think Mike Evans improved... You know, if you talk about pro football focus and those guys, they rave about Mike Evans. Also, I mean, Evans also is way too TB reliant. I mean, he does not get the yards that Jeffrey does. We'll see. Okay. Well, let's move on to the next one. Um... We have Doug Martin and Devonta Freeman. So, Mark, you uh, you missed out on a second rounder by skipping out on this one, so good for you. Um, I'm going to be on the pro side of Doug Martin, and Sam's going to be pro Freeman. I, uh, I kind of regretted this one. I don't know. I think uh, in a standard league, they're really close. I could go either way. Uh, That's what this game's all about. Yeah, but if, you, if, if, if I'm going to pick one who's going to absolutely bomb... I think it's going to be Doug Martin. I, I think you saw it two years in a row with him. Uh, I think I picked him in like the seventh or eighth round last year. There's a reason why I picked him in the seventh or eighth round last year. Uh, and he just got paid. So guys who lack motivation and just get paid, I don't, I don't trust him very much. Uh, but then again, I don't trust Devonta Freeman very much. But I think he has this floor with him with how many passes he's going to he's going to catch and how many times he's going to be on the field. So I would probably take Devonta Freeman. I'm not confident in that. Yeah. To be honest, I don't want either of them. I mean, I'm going to go off of, uh, you know, tackle level, which Doug Martin is a much better runner than Devonta Freeman. Yeah. Uh, Martin is the, was the number one rated in PFF. He had the number one yards of contact. And I'm just going to CJ, uh, CJ Anderson vibe from Freeman. CJ Anderson caught a lot of balls. He had decent runs, but he was, had a lot of touchdowns. In the passing game, and I just, I, I, I get what you're saying with the risk with Doug Martin as far as not being motivated, but I think Freeman will recess to the mean a lot. Um, and I think that, what's this backup, Norwood? Uh, Tevin Coleman. Tevin Coleman will come in and, you know, Doug Martin has Charles Sims, but Sims still got a lot of carries and was successful even with Martin and all of his success, so... Um, you know, I, I can contribute a lot of Martin's, you know, being a bust last two years to injury too. He had injuries, uh, and you know, I, I, I just if I'm drafting a running back, I want a running back that can run. Okay. Yeah. There, no, there's, I, a, there's a reason why Danny Woodhead gets drafted in the sixth round because he can't run the ball. I would. Um, 
I would be tempted to take either, and I, I would probably end up passing on both, to be honest with you. Yep, I, I'll probably be the same if Doug's there in the late in the early third. I'm taking Doug, probably. It's possible. Devonta's definitely going before Doug. I don't really get it, but hey. I think his floor is higher. I really do. I think uh, I don't see a circumstance where Devonta Freeman doesn't finish as a top 24 running back. Higher floor. Okay. Yeah. Right. Can agree. All right, so the next one, very interesting. Carson Palmer and Ben Roethlisberger. So since they were drafted in the same year, that's crazy, which is like 15-some years ago, uh, they have almost identical stats in yards, touchdown, completion. For their career? For their career. Wow. Games played, Roethlisberger has a little bit more. Um, and Yeah, because Palmer had those like two knee injuries. He right? had two. He had a double knee Double CL injury, I'd like okay. to call it, where two tendons in his knee snapped, okay. and he missed a full year. Um, Roethlisberger's always kind of banged up a little bit. So mm -hmm. we got Carson Palmer, and we got Ben Roethlisberger. Sam's going to be pro Palmer. I'll be pro Roethlisberger. I so. think this is the one I'm most confident in, really. Um, I don't like Ben Roethlisberger. I don't like owning him. I There were times last year where I thought I would, and then you just get these like games where it's like, I mean, you'll look at games and he throws for, you know, 180 yards all to Antonio Brown and no touchdowns. I don't like, see any problem with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if, if, you, if you double him up. Yeah. <clears throat> but I, uh, do you know Carson Palmer was probably the most consistent QB last year? He was. And uh, I don't think Besides he, Cam Newton. Yeah. But that he doesn't have the running ability. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So, but there wasn't a game where Carson Palmer didn't have a touchdown. Yep. So, and there wasn't a game below 15 points in our league, which is six points passing touchdown. Um, I think with Bruce Arians' offense, it's high flying. It's you know deep down the field. You get these even if he th even if he starts off sluggish, all it takes is one play for him to get going. Uh, with Ben Roethlisberger, there's a lot of reasons that he can get game planned out of a game. He can have Le'Veon Bell running the ball in. He can throw it at Antonio Brown where Antonio Brown gets 150 yards and Ben Roethlisberger can still have a bad game, uh, which doesn't happen with uh, Carson Palmer as much, I don't think. Uh, I, I I don't trust Ben Roethlisberger. I think Carson Palmer is going to be just fine this year again. Okay. Yeah, I get it. They're, they're ranked right next to each other on yeah. almost every professional analyst's rankings. Yeah. 6'7", six, 7'6". Seven, seven, six. They're almost they're, they're neck and neck. Um, what what changed me is that I looked at the you know I think quarterbacks go up and down every year, you know they're never like the same. Even Rodgers has had some down years mm -hmm. um, and some really good years. So if you look at uh, when you draft a quarterback, you want a top ten QB, right? There's stereotypically ten or twelve you know, teams in the league, yep. and you want one of those quarterbacks. If you don't have one of those quarterbacks, you're at a huge disadvantage. Yeah, because they're so easy to find, too. They're so easy to find. So if you don't have one, you're you're screwed. So if you take um, the top ten quarterbacks of the last eight years, so this is Carson Palmer um, with the Raiders. Um, He's still with the Bengals. Then. And the Bengals and um, Roethlisberger as is. Carson Palmer has only been a top ten quarterback 50% of the years he's played in the NFL in the last eight Okay. Roethlisberger has finished at 73%. So that's per week or that's for the entire that's year? That's for the entire year. We know fantasy football is a week-to-week -week game, okay. but at the end of the year, if you're wanting a top-10 quarterback, you have a 25, 23% more chance that Big Ben will be in the top 10. Uh, yeah, and everything's situational. I mean, you can look at when Michael Turner was drafted, and it's like, well, last year he was with San Diego. Well, it's a different circumstance. Uh, I think with Carson Palmer, this offense suits him so well, and he has so many weapons. And even David Johnson's a weapon. I mean, I, I just think his floor is so high, and his ceiling is what it was last year. It was the number two or three quarterback. Uh, ben Roethlisberger, I think his ceiling is at that level, but I don't think his floor is as high as Carson Palmer. There's no way that Carson Palmer finishes as not a top-10 QB, in my opinion. I, I think Roethlisberger's a winner. He's won Super Bowls. That and doesn't I, always go to fantasy, though. Doesn't always, but Palmer's not. No. Uh, and if Palmer wants to give up on a year, he will. Hmm. Roethlisberger never will. So, okay. Um, as, as far as if you want a top 10 QB, 
you're more likely to get one with Roethlisberger. Yeah. That's okay. that's my uh, if you you know I, I like both of them. I probably would you know go back and forth on this. I see both sides, but okay. Uh, there you go. Yeah. So now we have one that's kind of unfair a little bit, but uh, it's I'm going to base the most off value, and that is the tight ends, the two and three tight ends, Jordan Reed and Greg Olson. So Sam will be uh, Jordan Reed, and I'll be uh, Greg Olson. So I want you go first this time. You haven't gone first. I'll go first. Okay. So if you go value, Jordan Reed's a third round pick. Okay. Mock draft right now. Greg Olson's a fifth. So we're talking twenty picks between the two. And so if you want to talk about the most consistent tight end in the last three years, we're talking consistency ratings brought to you by Tristan Cockcraft of ESPN. You're welcome, Tristan. Uh, that's going to be Greg Olson. It's not Gronk, believe it or not. Hmm. Greg Olson has got more consistency from that position than anything else. And so it, it depends how you view the tight end position. You know, do you want um, you know, a boom or bust player, or do you want someone that's going to consistently get you you know, eight 12 points every game and it's kind of how your team is built too so if you you know if you draft you know a high let's say you're your your Volk with Charles Gronk and McCoy you know you're probably not going to go for Reed who's more injury prone you're probably going to go Greg Olson in the fifth round it's probably a more wise choice to give your team a little more consistency um yes Jordan Reed has a higher upside I get it but Greg Olson you know he's been there he's going to be a a, 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 a an important facet of that offense, a focus of it, and not much changed in his his career. Even when he's in Chicago, with uh, Bennett being there, the dude was still a beast. And um, I just think he's a better value in the fifth round. Okay. A third round pick, who who can you get in the third round? You can get a really good player in the third round. Yeah, and, I feel like you can get a good player in the fifth round too. But you're not going to get someone as consistent in the fifth round. You're, you're taking a lot more risk on. You're talking. You know, wide receivers like Doug Baldwin and, and those types of players where you're you're not going to have... If Greg Olson's there in the fifth round, I'm taking him. Well, sure. Let me be honest. I'm, I'm probably not going to take either of these guys simply because I feel like you can get a really good tight end. Well, you're a big Fleener guy. That's why. You're I taking like, a Fleener. I would take Fleener over Greg Olson for sure. Oof! Yeah. No, um, not me. Here, here's the deal with the tight end position, in my opinion. You can get a guy who's going to score you five points a week off the waivers. Like you you look at I'm looking at the rankings right now. Vance McDonald, Will Ty, uh, Clive Wolford, Jordan Cameron, Dwayne Allen, Jason Witten, those guys are below the fifteenth ranked tight ends. All of them. And I think they're gonna get you five points a week. So if you're talking about your tight end giving you like eight to twelve points a week consistently, that only is outscoring my team by three. But if I can get a guy who on a weekly basis scores in like the 15 to 16 range, like Jordan Reed did. Olsen's done that too. But so now, now we're talking about who Olsen is now. So he did it, he did it in the past, but Olsen plays for Carolina. But Reed's only done it for a year. Hold on, let me explain. It, it's what at what point in someone's career do you want someone? If you're talking about Olsen, he is in his 30s. He played in an offense that played out of its mind last year at an unsustainable level in throwing touchdowns for Camp Newton. And without their best receiver, their biggest red zone threat. And he still, still couldn't outscore Jordan Reed. Jordan Reed's on the ascension. He's the focal point of a Washington offense. And on a per game basis, he's only rivaled by Rob Gronkowski. And you're getting him two rounds later. Okay. I think, uh, I think... So his, would, you, would you rather have Reed in the third or Greg Olson in the fifth? I would rather have Reed in the third. Okay. Because I feel like I can supplement Reed with Jason Witten and get that balance where it's like if if Reed flames out and gets hurt, like he probably will, I can get that balance. Okay. That's my opinion. I've owned Olsen for two or three years in a lot of leagues, and boy, what a nice chess piece to have. I think you're going to see some decline. If that may Because Calvin Benjamin's going to take a lot of that, his niche. Could be. I mean, even if their offense sucks, like it did in Chicago, Olsen's still got a lot of a lot of targets. So even if their offense isn't good, you know, tight end's going to be your your third option on some wide receiver on your quarterback options, and he's still going to get it. So, yeah. all right, well, let's close her up. We got one last question, and this is the way you win this league. Uh, Grant is evidence of it, and it's with rookie wide receivers. We've seen rookie wide receivers in the last four years take over this league. 
If you get the hot one, that's your keeper. And they're there for a long time. Yep. Um, yes, they may be overvalued compared to running backs sometimes, but they are awesome. And uh, we have a lot of good ones this year. So uh, what rookie wide receiver would be your first option? Which one did you draft? So you get Corey Coleman, who went to the Browns, Josh Doxson, who went to the Redskins, our boy Laquan Treadwell. Uh, you got Michael Thomas, New Orleans, Sterling Shepard. Will Fuller went to Houston, and then Tyler Boyd went to Cincinnati. I like a lot of them. Um, there's a lot of good opportunities there, actually. It ends up being where their opportunity is better than their talent. If I'm playing this year, though, I want Sterling Shepard, probably number one of those guys. Uh, he steps into a number two role on an offense that has featured undersized wide receivers. You think even going back to Victor Cruz, Hakeem Nix, uh, all those guys were a little bit undersized. But, yes. they, but they've excelled in that offense, and I want... Sterling Shepard out of the slot to get me enough catches to make his volume worth owning. And for the value that he's going, he'll be fine. You're killing your OBJ vibe, then. I, why isn't there enough pass to go around? They're not going to run the ball. Paul Perkins. We'll see. Yeah. No, I agree. I think uh, as far as, like, consistency, yes. But I don't think Sterling Shepard will ever be your keeper. I don't think so, either. I think for this year I'd want Sterling Shepard, but if I'm going upside, it's probably going to be Josh Doxson then. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Are you a Kirk guy? Uh, not really, but I think... How do you like me now? Is that his, <laughs> is that his tagline? Uh, what do you think you like that? that? You like that? Yeah. Oh, one day to hit. But anyways, no, not, not particularly. I just think uh, he has an opportunity there, and he, he's probably the, the most prototypical number one receiver kind of guy. Okay. I think uh, Kirk Cousins said I like that to a lot of girls in college. That was bad. Didn't. <laughs> For Kirk Cousins and you. For Kirk. Um, you know, I'm, a, I was, uh, I'm actually very high in the Browns this year. Not because I think they're going to be, you know, a 10-6, 11-5 team. Just because they're, they're just so undervalued. Uh, you know, RG3, yes, he's had injury problems. But I'm a big Corey Coleman guy. Um, I think he's explosive. I think he's got the potential to be... You know, your your next. If Sammy Watkins was healthy, I think they're very similar players mm -hmm. uh, in their route running capabilities. Otherwise, you know, I like Michael Thomas uh, in that offense. He's explosive. I liked him out of Ohio State. I was I was thinking they should have picked Thomas over Treadwell, but they were right in picking Treadwell with this offense. I think I think Teddy will get much more use out of a guy like Treadwell, who's more of a a fighter. Along the line of scrimmage versus a guy who can kind of play your shoes off like Thomas. I like Trevor Long. I think I think it's going to end up well. Um, bold prediction for this year? Anything you got? Uh, the Browns are going to go nine and seven. Okay. I uh, my bold prediction for this year is that you see those top three wide receivers. There's going to be a regression to the mean. Two of those top three wide receivers between Antonio Brown, Odell Beckham, and Julio Jones will finish outside the top ten. And my bet. It's on Antonio Brown, Brown and Julio Jones. Jones. Yeah, I was I was thinking something similar, but with OBJ. Yeah. So I I uh, I can agree with that. I mean that always happens. I think we're gonna see. Uh, well, those, those, they've, all three of them have been pretty healthy the last couple of years. So true. one of them's gonna get an injury. And, and you just kind of feel it. And the thing about Antonio Brown for me is, yeah, he's he's one of the best talents we've seen, but you never see this kind of production. For year after year after year, especially after being kind of a late bloomer. There's someone called Jerry Rice that I seem to remember. If if he's he Jerry seemed to be okay and didn't start out super hot. If he's Jerry Rice, then Well, he's never gonna win as many Super Bowls because they don't have that defense on yeah, par. But uh, But he seems to be doing alright. Uh, and there's other guys, Tim Brown, um, you know, you could even go Chris Carter. As a late guy who started, who was consistent. I mean, I, I, there's plenty of wide receivers that were. He's he's due for one injured down year, and I think this is the year we're going to see it. And, and so was Odell. Pe people are overcompensating these wide receivers. I think we're going to find out that we're going too far with it. Yeah, could be. Well, we'll find out this year. Welcome to the Trusted Taylor League. We're glad you could join us and listen through all this garbage. Uh, you know, if you're ready to uh, throw some. So fire at Sam and I, do so. Feel free to join us. Uh, we'll probably have a post-draft podcast, mm -hmm. um, you know, and we'll make fun of people some more. So, uh, anyways, glad you could join us. And we'll see you guys on Friday night. Bye. Bye.